Good morning, everyone. <laughs> well, today is an occasion of enormous significance as we gather to celebrate the inauguration of DC Health's new headquarters. Um, this, moment, this moment resonates deeply with me, giving a profound sense of pride and gratitude. And for the past seven years, I've had the privilege of serving as a member of the DC Health family, passionately dedicating myself to advancing public health initiatives. Specifically, I've been deeply involved in HOSTA, where I played a vital role in supporting the HIV AIDS, hepatitis, STD, and tuberculosis administration. For far too long, Ward 8 has been overlooked and underserved in various aspects. The presence of DC Health's headquarters in our community not only brings essential services um, closer to home, but also signals a tangible investment in our neighborhood's future. As a resident of Ward 8 since 2007, I've witnessed improvements and economic development since purchasing my home in the Washington Highlands neighborhood as, part, um, as a proud resident woven into uh, the very fabric of Ward 8. I can't help but feel a surge of excitement um, at the thought of our organization establishing roots right here in my own backyard. So today's inauguration is more than just an unveiling of a new facility. Um, it symbolizes a renewed commitment to our mission of serving the community and advancing public health. As we embark on this new chapter, I'm filled with excitement for the opportunity um, that lies ahead, particularly here in Ward 8. Um, it has been an honor to be part of this transformative journey, and I'm eager to continue our collective efforts to enhance the health and uh, prosperity of our community. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to each of you for joining us today, and I am thrilled to introduce Mayor Mariel Bowser. <laughs> well, let's give Stacy a big round of applause. I am really, really excited. I'm great. I'm really pleased to be here with the Ward 8 Council Member, Council Member Trayon White. Please give him a big round of applause. And as I sat down, um, it wasn't long ago when we sat in the conference room in Las Vegas and talked about the Reunion Square and the Reunion Square TIFF and how we would together bring um, the first tax increment financing project to Ward 8 uh, with this project. So I want to congratulate you, Council Member White, on delivering uh, this first economic development tool that we have delivered across all eight wards across the District of Columbia to bring jobs, new amenities, and economic development to communities uh, in its past time. Um, but I'm proud to be the mayor that delivers um, this economic development tool to Ward 8. I want to acknowledge and recognize our leader of the Department of Health, Dr. Ayanna Bennett. Give Dr. Bennett a big round of applause. We are so grateful uh, for your leadership, Dr. Bennett, uh, in managing uh, this move to, to Ward 8 um, and in your <clears throat> appointment as a leader of, the, I think, the best health department in the nation, right, at DC Health, the best. And I, of course, want to recognize all of our partners uh, in um, the, the, the health space, Dr. Be Dr. Barbara Bezron, uh, who is the director of the Department of Behavioral Health. Uh, give Dr. Bezron a big round of applause, as well as um, representing Deputy Mayor Wayne Turnage, Ms. Creighton from the Deputy Mayor's Office. Thank you for being here. And um, our, what I call the construction arm of DC government, uh, who takes care of our buildings, builds our buildings, uh, and makes sure that we're elevating the experience for our employees. Uh, Dr. Bennett just said, welcome to the fanciest municipal government office in the nation. And I said, I can't wait to see this. And why not? Um, we ask you to do Herculean work for the people of the District of Columbia. 
and we want your experience um, while you're working um, to be an outstanding one. Uh, we regard being in the office together as a place where ideas uh, come to fruition, collaboration happens, where we push each other uh, to be even better. Uh, and we recognize that that in-person space and collaboration uh, has to be top-notch. It has to be different than it was. Uh, it has to be inviting and collaborative spaces. Uh, and we think that we're delivering exactly that. I told Dr. Bennett that I would forgive her because I have an office in this building here at Shannon Place. Uh, and I opened that office as my Ward 8 office uh, when I was elected mayor in 2015. I think the council member may have an office in there too. Uh, but I used to have a view. <laughs> I used to have a view of the entire city. But now I get to have a view of the Department of Health, and that's that's fine too. So uh, you will, and when you see me, uh, you know, go over to your rooftop, you'll know why. I'm trying to get my view back. Uh, and you are also a a huge part of a of a larger puzzle and a very important puzzle piece, uh, because we are establishing um, here in Ward Eight a new health care corridor. Uh, today, we open DC Health. In September, we open the Whitman Walker Max Robinson Center on the St. Elizabeth campus. <laughs> and in the budget that Councilmember White and his colleagues are considering, I also uh, included money to open an advanced technical center for high school students at Whitman Walker. Um, which is fantastic. And Advanced Technical Center is another way, the new way, of describing vocational training. Uh, and what it will allow is our high school students to be exposed to high growth industries uh, and train for the jobs that are vacant in our health system right now, where people are earning not only living wages, they're earning the types of wages that we need our families to earn to have great lives right here in Washington, D.C. And in 2022, just across the road here, we opened the new Cedar Hill Urgent Care Center in Ward 8. And next up, you know what's next up, the state of the heart, state of the art, Cedar Hill Regional Medical Center of GW Health, uh, a full service hospital in the St. Elizabeth's campus right here in Ward 8. And we're not only focused on what we're delivering in Ward 8, um, we also announced the plan to open a freestanding emergency medical department at Fletcher Johnson in Ward 7. Uh, so I know that Council Member Gray wanted to be here uh, today because he is fully supportive of all things health uh, for the District of Columbia and certainly uh, for Ward 8. You are also observing um, a promise that we made and that we're delivering. And that is to bring more DC government agencies in the neighborhoods east of the river. So last summer we celebrated DGS's new location at, um, in Ward 7, and they have a beautiful new headquarters on Minnesota Avenue. And we're making this effort because we know uh, that when we invest, others follow. Uh, and that is important for corridors in Ward 7 and 8, just like it was important for uh, buildings and corridors in Noma, uh, just like it was important in Gallery Place Chinatown. It's important here in Anacostia. So now at this headquarters, we will have 700 D.C. health employees, 20% of whom uh, live east of the river. And when this site is done, it will have 95,000 square feet of office space, 130,000 square feet of retail, 480 new homes, including affordable housing and senior living units. That's a win, win, 
win. And finally, I want to recognize uh, our friends at Martha's Table. Uh, and we know that Martha's Table will also have a major presence here. Where's Tiffany Williams? Give Tiffany a big breath. Thank you, Tiffany, for being here. And two years ago, in partnership with Martha's Table, we announced a pilot called Strong Family, Strong Futures. Uh, because we know uh, and believe that we, uh, when we have investments in our families and housing and neighborhoods, that's also the best investment that we can make in their health. And so we uh, have been providing through this program direct cash assistance to new and expecting moms living in wards five, seven, and eight. And in the first year of the program, we had 132 moms participate, and they reported significant improvements in their housing, food, and financial stability. And so today I'm proud to announce that the second round of payments will start going out to 118 moms who will receive $626 per month, or about $75 hundred dollars over the course of the year and in my fiscal 2025 budget proposal we are including another one million dollars for the third and final year of the strong St strong families program so 55 percent of our strong family strong future moms are ward 8 residents and as we continue to learn more about the impact of the program we look forward to using those results to guide future policies and programs and, of course, attract philanthropic support. And so with that, uh, I'm a proud mayor. I'm proud of this D.C. Department of Health. I'm even more proud of the partnership between uh, our administration and council member Trey on White on delivering um, all of the things that we have promised the people of Ward 8. So with that, I want to introduce council member Trey on White. Good morning, Washington, D.C. And good morning to great Ward 8. Uh, it's an exciting day for us here at East of the Anacostia River. I know one of my colleagues, Councilmember Vincent Gray, who fought the battle for us to have health equity, East Anacostia River, was not able to make it, but I want to honor him today and his leadership. Uh, as we embrace the arrival of D.C. Health to our community, we extend a warm and heartfelt welcome to those who gather here at this space today. We are truly grateful for such an amazing uh, display of essential services East here East of Anacostia River, here at Reunion Square. Uh, this was a long journey. Uh, this is the first TIF uh, tax increment finance we ever had East of Anacostia River, and we went back and forth trying to figure out what do we want here in our community. And so we're excited to have DC Health here today and all those workers. If you're a worker of DC Health, let me see you raise your hand. And I see some of those up in the window up there today. <laughs> This is important because uh, Ward 8 has some of the highest, and Ward 7, some of the highest health disparities per capita in the country. Um, and it's important that we show our leadership of what we want to see happen right here in our community by strategically placing the department within the community and reducing the barriers of access and ensuring that all residents have equity, help access to equity health care, health care opportunities. As you, as you see, we also have the urgent care facility across the street managed uh, by GW. Uh, we have the Department of Human Services, the Social, Sur Social Service Administra Administration across the street, the Mayor's Office of Attorney Citizens Affairs, uh, and we also building a brand new hospital right up the street. Give a round of applause for that for you, Mayor Bowser, for your leadership. <laughs> but this creates a centralized hub for residents to have access to, to services here in the East Anacostia River. Uh, just this morning, walking up, I encountered a lady who was in the corner right here just break down crying, and I couldn't just walk past her. I stopped. I know we were trying to get to my seat today, but she was weeping because she was having some 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 issues. And so I stopped and said, what's going on? She said, well, my ID is broke and it's old. And so I want to thank, thank you, Dr. Bennett, for stopping with me to address her to make sure she, her, your staff got her in the building to get access to what she needs today. Give you a round of applause, Dr. Bennett, for your leadership. By being embedded 
in the community, we, we double down on our commitment that we put health care as a priority for residents all across the district, but most importantly, East and Ancosti River. Uh, so today, I'm glad the sun has come out, even though the sun doesn't technically come out. You know, the earth rotates, but people say that. <laughs> Uh, because I didn't know we was going into April, going back into January. Uh, we look forward to building strong, a strong health care system here. And this is one example of our commitment. I want to say to my partners at Four Points, thank you. Uh, we appreciate your leadership, not only building this beautiful edifice right here and right here, but we must all, as I always say, we must double down on building on the people here at East Anacosta River. And don't forget about that senior home we promised our people. We promised a state of the brand new senior living facility here at the Virginia Square Project. So I want to thank you, Mayor Bowser, your team, your leadership. And with that being said, I want to introduce our director for DGS, my friend, Delano Hunter. Come on up. Thank you. All right. Good morning, everyone. Give yourselves a round of applause for being here. My, my name is Delano Hunter, and I'm proud to serve as the director of the D.C. Department of General Services. And our, our motto is that we build, maintain, and sustain uh, the District of Columbia's real estate portfolio, which was about 35 million square feet. Now, officially, we can say we can update our stats to 35.2 million square feet with this addition. Uh, we're really proud of our work here, uh, and this is a team effort, so my, my job is to thank those that were responsible for delivering this world-class project. First, I, I want to thank uh, Mayor Bowser for her vision, and she has indicated uh, this is uh, a part of this division, a branch out of her mayor order, uh, that new district government facilities relocate to east of the river. And this is just one of many. I'm sure as you passed today, you saw DHCD, uh, which will open this spring, and this is on the hills of DGS and the Department of Corrections moving into our headquarters uh, on Minnesota Avenue. So we're really proud. Uh, I remember a few years ago when I was in a previous capacity, Councilmember White said, man, I'm ready to see some dirt moving. I'm ready to see some dirt moving. So I think and what he was indicating was that the projects that were in a pipeline. As we look at Ward 8, this is just there's so much. In fact, uh, Mayor, and in fact, Councilmember White, we have the most capital dollars and capital projects allocated in Ward 8 which is really good. We're just a few blocks away from Anacostia at Ketchum, the Cedar Hill Regional Medical Center, Congress Heights Recreation Center, Douglas Recreation Center. There's the uh, Ward 8 Congress Heights uh, Wellness Center, so so much to be excited for. Uh, additionally, I want to thank Deputy Mayor Turnage, uh, Deputy Mayor Albert, also would like to thank Dr. Bennett and her team, as well as the team that helped to make today possible. Uh, I want to thank uh, our project manager, Serena Samsudin. If you're here, please raise your hand. Uh, along with <laughs> Megan Daraji, Mohammed Jallo, Rashad Jenkins. Uh, I see Tim Foley. I see so many others from the DGS team. And I want to thank the hardworking men and women, of course, from uh, Davis Construction, our general contract, if you can raise your hand. All right, all right. This amazing design team at OXP Architects, if you're here, raise your hand. All right, there they are. All right, all right. Uh, and of course, we could not do this without our partner and, uh, and our landlord and a developer uh, from Four Points. I want to thank uh, John Gerber as well. So when you get a chance to visit this facility, you're going to see a state-of-the-art facility from uh, a welcoming uh, uh, a welcome center uh, to world-class facilities, a rooftop terrace, a fitness gym, uh, the, I think amongst the best sight lines that we have in the district of, of downtown uh, and into Northwest. Uh, now, this project is not only an investment east of the river, but this project employed 106 D.C. residents. So if you worked on this project and you're a district resident, we want to recognize you as well. Uh, also, uh, and of those, I want to say that 59 from, were from wards 7 and 8, and also 22 interns. I think our interns are here. If you can raise your hand and be recognized. And 62 percent of the, uh, the, the dollars went to CBE firms, which is also something to celebrate. Uh, so with that being said, we're just really excited. This is one of 332 active capital projects uh, that DGS has spearheaded across the district, uh, and over 70 percent will deliver over the next 18 months. So we can look forward to many more ribbon cuttings. Uh, so with that being said, uh, again, I want to uh, thank our partners at Full Point, and I'd like to uh, welcome to the podium the founder and CEO of Full Points, and that's Mr. John Gerber. Let's give him a hand.
So good morning. We're so thrilled about this project, very proud. As you guys, as everybody here knows, projects like this take enormous teams, uh, take years to pull off, and commitment at all levels, um, uh, high and low in the city. And, and we are just proud to be here today with, to celebrate with you all as we open this, this uh, landmark project in Ward 8. Um, my name is John Gerber, as I said, and I want to thank everybody for attending today uh, as we celebrate the opening of the district uh, DC Health Headquarters. Um, so many people have been involved, it's impossible to recognize everybody by name. I'll, I'll do my best to recognize a few, of course. Uh, any recognition, of course, starts with Mayor Bowser. Thank you, Mayor, uh, for pri providing all the leadership you have uh, to support the district agencies moving toward eight. Um, you know, without the, the leases and the support, projects like this can't really happen. And uh, that leadership is terrific. And of course, Council Member White, thank you um, from the very beginning of this project to today and, and heading forward. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you, so thank you. Um, and thank you for your leadership in helping us integrate our efforts with the community. Uh, that's, that's always a, a huge goal, and, a, and, and uh, we're proud to have worked with you on that. Um, we'd also like to thank Jonathan Kane and the rest of the DEMPED team for their leadership on the TIF. Uh, this is a, um, ho hopefully a watershed moment, moment to see more of those, and um, you know this project could not have been possible without that. Um, we'd also like to thank ANC Commissioner Robin McKinney <coughs> for her continued support uh, in the terrific work here. And of course, we want to thank the DC Health team and all of your employees. Um, this project's really about you at the end of the day, and. Um, we're, we're thrilled to be cutting the, the ribbon with you and uh, welcoming you to your new home here. Um, <clears throat> we also want to thank our own team, uh, particularly our development partners, George Curtis and Curtis Investment Group. Um, I was asking Mike Gimbert earlier how long their families own this properly. It's almost a century. <laughs> My gosh. Um, they've been stewards here, and uh, we couldn't have built this project without their participation as a landowner and developer with us. And of course, Blue Sky Housing is our development partner on this project. Um, projects like this need financing. Uh, Citizens Bank, Hudson Realty Capital, Mitsubishi Capital, Lisk uh, have all been tremendous financial partners. Um, this project started right as uh, the pandemic was, I mean, when it, you know, broke ground and um, Having those financial partners uh, with us during that time was, was essential. Of course, Davis Construction, Jim Davis and his team, uh, Hickok Cole, OPX as the tenant architects, uh, and all the many, many subcontractors who, who actually roll up their sleeves and build projects like this, thank you to you all. And many of those were, of course, Ward 8 and Ward 7 uh, CBEs, and we're very, very proud of that. We have some very special guests here today, um, uh, several Ward 8 students who were interns, um, Kevin Brown, Teddy Lawrence, Mandel Bellamy, London Warren, Warren Dent, and Destiny Warren Dent. They're just five of uh, many we had on this project uh, who worked on Reunion Square, and a big round of applause to you all. So we are, of course, at this beautiful headquarters for DC Health. Um, it will also be the home uh, for the Department of Employment Services, the DC Infrastructure Academy, and the American Job Center. We're also excited to announce today that we've signed a lease with the Discovery Learning Center Academy, which is a district-based business run by Daniel Tyson, and they'll be launching their third daycare facility in the district here at Reunion Square. And this is truly hot off the press where we've just signed a letter of intent with Brewed with Soul, which is uh, brings coffee and sandwiches and artisan sandwiches and signature salads and he healthy food, um, uh, which I need, <laughs> uh, uh, brought to you uh, 
by Ward 8 native Darrell Gaston, who brought kitchen savages to this community. And we're very proud to have him here. His restaurant was named uh, the best new restaurant in the Washington City paper in 2023, and we're thrilled to have him at this project. Um, as mentioned earlier, the, this is part of a bigger project, and, and I'll, I'll get down quickly here soon because I've already talked too long, but uh, this is part of a bigger project uh, which will eventually have a 115 to 120 key hotel, room hotel, um, ancillary office space, neighborhood serving retail, and as, as noted before, 134 units of senior living affordable housing. Um, we're e eager to get these projects started. Um, we're obviously in a tricky financial market, but as soon as there's some stability there, uh, we, can, we can move forward with those. Um, this will be part of, of course, a bigger eight-acre redevelopment um, of this part of uh, historic Anacostia, which will ultimately have a million and a half square feet of development and will bring dynamic economic development <coughs> and vibrancy um, uh, to this already vibrant neighborhood. So we're very thrilled again today, and thank you for this enormous team that came together to make this project a reality. Now I'm uh, thrilled to bring up the team of the hour uh, and their leader, Dr. Ayanna Bennett. Thank you all for being here. We are certainly a team. I got my team gear on. I got my team in the windows above my head. Um, and <clears throat> sorry, we thank you for being here to, to um, understand and see what it is we hope to bring to this community. I thank Mayor Bowser for her vision and more than vision follow through to bring this um, to fruition. I thank uh, Council Member White for his advocacy and his leadership here. Moving um, economic development into an area is health. So that is the very foundational part of health equity. We are gonna do lots of things to make that even bigger. But that is a first step that is necessary to really bring health equity to a community. So thank also DGS, DEMPED, Four Points, everybody who was thanked for building this place. It is incredibly beautiful. Having such a place that, um, I said, it is the fanciest building I've ever lived in, or worked in, um, is really a testament to the staff that the work they do here matters. It happens to be National Public Health Week. So I'm gonna speak for very, <laughs> a very short period. Um, I just want everybody to understand what gets done here. You encounter us every day. In, the, um, in this building are inspectors who make sure that the restaurants and pools and gyms and other things that you go to are clean and that you leave them healthy. Uh, in this building are people who administer $100 million worth of grants of local and federal money to make sure that organizations like Martha's Table and Community of Hope and our family and um, medical counseling, that all of those organizations have what they need to do the services that they deliver to you. So you see us all the time and we um, don't always put our name on it, but I'm hoping that you can appreciate that these are people who are working for you on a day-to-day -day basis. And the other um, most important thing that we wanna be um, very clear about is that this is a commitment for us to be a bigger part of the community. So I have told everybody I believe in community inclusion, not community engagement. And so we want people to be included in this. That means that you will, some of our organizations, you will be invited here. Some of them we're gonna see today that people in the community are both being served by the front facing things like vital records or getting licensed for a profession. Hopefully we are training them and then licensing them to work in the district. And we hope that that means that people will start to understand how we can help you. And then we'll bring new ideas and innovation and things that match because we can't help a community until we understand it and we can't understand it until we talk. So I'm hoping that that is what this day will bring and uh, if you have not gotten an invitation, you will. And we'd like to see people in the building. And I'm hoping everybody enjoys looking around today. So I want to be sure that we get going. We got a little bit of sun left. 
So let's get that ribbon cut. Everybody up. On the count of three. One, two, three. Welcome. Yeah. take a few quick press questions. Any questions? Yes. How, how important is mental health, behavioral health, especially for young people, part of this commitment here? Uh, it's, of course, very important. Uh, our investments continue in making sure our health care system is connecting people with their primary care closer to their communities, uh, but also in um, making sure they have urgent care, hospital care, and the people here at DC Health are helping uh, to make sure that system works. And quick off-topic question. I think everybody is aware of the, the shooting at the Brookland Metro yesterday. Earlier this week, you introduced uh, legislation on youth accountability. Can you bring people up to speed who weren't aware of that, what you're hoping to address with young people, violence in the city? Um, we have a pretty comprehensive bill. Let me first just say, I, I, I think what we witnessed was another example of, of the use of guns indiscriminately and how it's impacting young people. Uh, and tragically, we had a juvenile uh, who lost his life. I can't speak to the specifics of that incident today, but whatever they are, I know it wasn't about anything or worth it. Uh, what our bill uh, has uh, that we have before the council now is several prongs. It allows us to address the truancy system uh, that delivers on its promises that when teacher identify a young person that's not coming to school, all other parts of the system have to work. Uh, and that's from creating a new uh, team at DHS to having requirements for how it proceeds um, through OEG and the courts. Another part of it is creating an alternative school placement um, for children who are having behavioral issues at their home school where they just can't be served. Um, so this would give us the ability to take those kids out of home school, uh, out of that home school, not move them around to schools, but put them in an alternative school where their needs could be um, better met. And if they are, then they could return uh, to their home school. Uh, the bill also uh, eliminates some crimes from being eligible for diversion. And what that means, I think the general public thinks when there is a crime committed using a gun, a person is prosecuted and either a, a jury and, and judge decide what happens. But sometimes in our system, that prosecution is short-circuited for a diversion. Um, and that what a diversion means is if a kid and the prosecutors agree um, to a certain plan, then the kid doesn't go to court, doesn't see a jury, doesn't see a judge, and frequently there is an accountability. So that's appropriate for some kids in some situations, um, but we don't think it's appropriate, and more than we, being me and our team, we don't think the public thinks it's appropriate. Um, they want to know that if there's a crime using a gun committed, that there's going to be accountability. So that's what the bill would do. Uh, there are several bills. Um, this would make the third, I think, that talk about truancy at, at one level. The final element of the bill has to do with parental accountability. Uh, and it, we have to have a way to mandate parents participating uh, in the process, the ju ju adjudicatory process. Uh, and this bill will require what's in the statute now, uh, parental orders to be enforced, which would mean that parents have to participate in the process. Yes. Uh, congratulations on Thank this you. infrastructure. Thank you. Can you please speak to, uh, as far as access to healthy foods, um, your, your progress on that given especially what happened with, with Good Food Market on South Capitol? Well, um, what happened with Good Food Market is we made a big investment um, and it, uh, it didn't work out, it failed. And I, 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 people should, while we're unhappy that it failed, it's not unusual for food businesses to open and close. Um, and it won't be any different um, in, in this neighborhood. Some make it, some don't. Um, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. 
It doesn't mean that we shouldn't make the investment. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't continue to attract um, great retailers that have had success uh, in the confluence of issues at that location, unfortunately didn't allow it to proceed. Now we have used um, many funds to get Ward 7 and 8 businesses, food businesses open. We're proud of that. Uh, some years ago, uh, there was no, um, there were sit-down establishments, bars, um, and taverns that struggled. Uh, we helped open a sit-down restaurant right here on Martin Luther King. We helped open coffee establishments right here on uh, Martin Luther King. And I'm pleased to hear that others uh, will follow. As far as actual groceries with, you know, fruit, vegetables, what's the update on that as far as Ward 8 residents being able right. to Right. So right up the street, you may recall at Lidl, we opened, I guess, a year, a little bit more than a year ago, which had been the first full-service grocer open in Ward 7, I think, in more than 30 years. Uh, which is a, a short distance from here. Uh, and we also continue to invest in uh, making sure that uh, existing Ward 8 grocers are able to operate uh, and that residents have access to them. Yes. Thank you. We also reopened a uh, fresh food factory located on St. Louis East Campus at the Sycamore Oak location. Uh, the issue with South Capitol and Atlantic is there's litigation going on between the former operator and the owner of the property, so we're in constant communication with them. But lawsuits take a little bit more time than we expect while people are still needing access to groceries, but we are looking at other vendors coming to that location as well. Yes. Would the bill you just spoke about do something about their calls for accountability? I'm, I'm not really, sh I don't know about the situation you're referring to. Uh, they, they just were frustrated by the crime and, and they feel like sometimes in the city there's a lack of accountability when, when juveniles participate. Okay, I don't really have anything more to add than what I've already said uh, about, uh, about our bill. Yes. equity program running. There was a rally earlier today. I know you said it came down to fully funding the reserve, uh, but if you could talk about why that program and with potentially reducing AFRA-level AFRA funding from other programs help offset the reserve fund. I'm, I'm not sure I follow your question. Say that again. Yes. Uh, so I know you said it came down to fully funding the reserve, the decision to eliminate the pay equity program. Mm -hmm. Would funding... Would um, reducing APRA level funding. APRA? APRA level. So ARPA, ARPA funds. Oh, ARPA. Yes. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's okay. Yes. So reducing that level of funding from other programs, would that help offset the reserve fund? Is that even an option? Um, I think I understand what you mean, but let me uh, step back for a second. Um, in in my and we will be out in the community over the next 70 days talking about the budget proposal but what we did was balance our budget uh, for this year and for the next five years which we are required to do um, by law and over the course of the next five years what is estimated is that our rate of growth our economic growth in the city which has been for 15 years six percent growth is now going to be two percent growth and so as a result, we have to reduce our spending. Um, and at the same time, uh, we've asked uh, our residents and businesses to, to kick in a little bit more uh, so that we can maintain our core services and functions to make sure that we can invest in public safety, public schools, and invest in the downtown, uh, which is necessary to get that growth back up. Um, we, we've had to make some cuts across the government. All of our agencies uh, looked at how they could tighten their belts. All of our agencies looked at programs that were working or maybe not as working as well. And so just as an example, in the, up, the first year of that five years, we had to cut $700 million. 
So 500 million of that came from efficiencies that we found across the government. And then we had to go um, and look at programs that either hadn't gotten started yet or programs that just simply won't be sustainable. And what do I mean by that? Won't be sustainable. Remember I said we had 2% growth? If we have a program that costs and grows 10, 7%, 10% every year, that's not sustainable. We're not generating enough revenue to keep up with the fast growing expense. And so we looked at programs like that. Uh, and some of those programs uh, we recommended uh, for, for cutting. Uh, so what you reference is a late requirement in our process um, to fund a reserve that we created <laughs> Council created it uh, as a way to make sure that we could maintain um, our operations without using any borrowing. That was a decision that we made as a council when I was on the council some years ago. Um, and so that requirement, which we approached this budget process, not believing that we had to fill $217 million, um, had made us make some later cuts that we didn't think we would have to make at the start of the process. So I also want people to know what the pay equity fund is. Um, I guess a few years ago, the council created this fund um, and it chose an industry to subsidize incomes for, and that is the childcare sector. Uh, and what it means is this fund that's generated from people's tax dollars is then given uh, to child care workers. And I think they have ranges of what they, what they receive as a subsidy from the government. I think sometimes cash, you know, checks are sent out um, to workers. Uh, and it's tagged to a teacher's salary. So that means that number is going to go up as teacher salaries um, go up. So at this point, and I don't know, I think that the council is still um, working to figure out if the, the requirement to, to fully fund the pay equity, um, the fiscal reserve is ne legally necessary. So they're going to work on that issue. Um, and then I think they're also going to look at the entire budget to see if they're able to fund it. Here's, here's my caution. My caution is that we should not be going back to the taxpayers and saying we need more. Because if we do that this year, specifically for that fund, we'll need to do it every year until we can contain the cost of that program, which is, will only grow. It's my two cents. Yes. Uh, a health-related question yes. for the DOH director, if she doesn't mind. Of sure. Um, and you spoke on this a little bit. I just wanted to get more clarity around your vision as it relates to equity and how the placement of the headquarters in Ward 8 plays in that. So the placement of the headquarters is the placement of 700 workers, who uh, many of whom already lived in this community, but who um, use services in this community and contribute part of their economic activity to Ward 8 as they are here. That is a, an economic move. The other part of that is that those people doing that will help support businesses which encourage other businesses to come. You have to have a seed and then once that seed is there it, it can encourage more growth. I'm hoping that is what happens. I think that is part of the vision here. More growth means that people have much more chance to have a living wage, that they have um, an income that can support the kind of lifestyle and food choices and access to health care that we say they need. Those things cost money, getting them costs money, and to the degree to which we address that, that level of um, income disparity, we address health care and health of the family. Follow up? Mm -hmm. So, uh as it relates to Ward 8 students, Ward 7 students, what's your vision for creating that pipeline so that they too are working here one day? Yeah, we um, are looking at our different kind of um, loan repayment and scholarship programs to see how much we can tie those to uh, our students who live in D.C. already. We already know that they are comfortable living in D.C. We know that they're committed to the community. We know that they're familiar with the community. So that is a pool of people who are um, probably the best suited 
to work in healthcare in this community. And the more opportunities like the Advanced Technical Center that we have for them to understand about healthcare, to learn how to work in it, uh, we want to do. Internships and other opportunities to work in public health, which is a little bit different, means you're out in the community, you're trying to figure out um, how to get people's lifestyles to change, all of those things, not just treating them, but trying to get them to never have that illness in the first place. That kind of internship we'll look at in our own, our own um, area, but also from our partners. So that $100 million worth of grant funding funds programs all over the community, and we would look to them also to include residents in their hiring and their programming, and they do. Okay. All right, thank you, everybody. Let's take a look at the best municipal building in the world. Congratulations, Delano and DGS.